Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Stumbo98, and welcome to the first episode of my Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 Legacy of Solaris playthrough. If you've never heard of Sonic 06 Legacy of Solaris, what it is, in short, is an absolutely massive overhaul to the original game. This is a mod for the original game, unlike some other Sonic 06 projects out there that are built from the ground up, so we are going to have a much more traditional Sonic 06 experience with this one. What this mod does is it adds an absolute crap ton of new content. I'm talking character stories, I'm talking new stage variants, I'm talking new moves, new new versions of already existing moves. It's absolutely insane. And on top of all of that, it utilizes the Sonic 06 mod manager and all of the patches that tons of people in the community have made to transform Sonic 06 from an absolute pile of garbage to maybe a lesser pile of garbage that's actually pretty fun. <laughs> so without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Of course, I'll be talking a lot more about it as we actually head into the game here. This episode is going to cover, of course, Sonic's story. So if you guys are ready, I'm ready too to finally get this started. Let's jump into Sonic 06 Legacy of Solaris. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started here. We're starting from a new game, which means we only have access to our boy Sonic the Hedgehog, who is the first character we're going to be starting with. So let's jump right in to Legacy of Solaris. You're going to see right away the load screens not only are going to have some new graphics, but the loading is going to be a lot faster. That's because we are using the Xenia emulator, which is really cool. One thing I'm going to be talking about as we just get started here in Sonic Story, just going from cutscene trigger to cutscene trigger. Uh, this is Sonic 06, which means we've got some jank, and I'm going to be utilizing that jank to our fullest advantage through uh, the playthrough here. Before you're able to do anything, and that means go to Wave Ocean, we do have to gain the ability to use the light speed dash in order to get over there. In Castle Town, um, or in any of the hub worlds, there are these shops that you can go to and they contain our upgrades. If you're familiar with Retail 06, you can see there's some extra upgrades for us uh, that we can purchase early in Legacy of Solaris, but we need rings in order to do that. The only way to get rings is to do some town missions. The only one available to us right now being mission number one right here, Winder, the Winder of a Shoemaker, or Winder of a Shoemaker, maybe. One thing that I want to talk about is that uh, there's a fun little thing that you can do to get an item early, but in order to do that, you basically need to S rank uh, everything at the start here. If you want to play, you know, if you're playing along or you want to play exactly as I'm playing here, so it may take some practice, but thankfully town missions, when it comes to S ranking them, they're usually not too difficult. But as you can see here with all of these patches equipped, we're able to control Sonic a whole lot better than we were able to in Retail 06. As you're seeing right here, mission completed, restored. Uh, that was a beta element of Sonic 06 that didn't make it into the final product. So the developers of Legacy of Solaris added it in here. Uh, if you're live with me on the stream, the main lead developer for Legacy of Solaris is Jotaro Powered. Of course, I'm going to have a little blurb and dedicate because Legacy of Solaris is a massive project that a lot of people have worked on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and list the credits to all the people that have worked on Legacy of Solaris here as well as, you know, back in the beginning of the playthrough. All right, now that we got that S rank and we got our 1000 rings, we're going to go ahead and purchase the light chip only. We do have enough rings to purchase the anti-gravity slide, but if you have some, if you want to have some fun, I recommend only purchasing the light chip. Also, Rob Tom, thank you so much for gifting a tier one sub to Terra Fail. Terra, enjoy that gem and all the emotes that go along with it. And Rob Tom, thank you so much for supporting the stream. I appreciate it. Another cool thing about Legacy of Solaris is it uses one of the patches to put the light speed dash on the Y button. Can we do this? Or did they fix this? That may be fixed. So we'll just do the uh, the normal light dash here. Well, let's go ahead and get started with our first stage, Wave Ocean. Wave Ocean, we want to collect as many rings as possible uh, because a item in the shop is going to unlock once we do so. 
Um, as you see here, getting into the main gameplay of 06, Sonic in Legacy of Solaris still has all of his moves that he had in Retail 06. We got access to the spin kick. We've got the light speed dash. We've got the homing attack. A lot of the stuff has changed as well. And if you haven't checked out my installation tutorial yet on this, uh, for this mod, I highly recommend doing so because that covers all of the patches that are enabled. There are so many enabled that I can't really cover them all while trying to play the game and talk to the chat as well. But yeah, as you can see here, Legacy of Solaris vastly improves the control of 06. It actually makes it into something uh, quite fun. However, we still do have the extremely precise control and a bit wonky speed, but uh, yeah. Pretty crazy stuff here, which is neat. You missed the metal run ruin. No. Yes, this will not be a 100% playthrough. I will be covering only most of the new content that Legacy of Solaris adds into uh, Sonic 06, which is pretty sweet. Looks really dope. Yeah, that would be uh, Lokster you're talking about. Lokster reworked uh, the final boss fight into something pretty cool. But yep. Uh, kind of as we go on here before we switch to Tails, um, there is something I want to talk about. I do not like the original Sonic 06. Like, I like P06, and I like Legacy of Solaris, obviously, but I don't like the original 06. I don't have many memories with it, so just uh, that perspective is what we're approaching this from, which I think gives Legacy of Solaris pretty high praise for making me actually enjoy playing through Retail 06. Switching on over to Tails here, Tails doesn't have a whole lot changed in terms of his, like, uh, his moveset, except that we do, if we press X, we can do this little tail swipe attack. Those familiar with another, uh, Sonic 06 project, Sonic Project 06, that is directly, uh, taken from Project 06. Chaos X allowed, uh, uh, Jotaro and the rest of the team to use some of the animations from Project 06, giving Tails the ability to do his tail swipe here, which is really cool. You just gotta press X. It's a lot better, honestly, than using his dummy ring bombs. Though, carpet bombing is pretty fun to do as well. Looks like uh, the audio is a little bit high, so I'm gonna have to turn that down a bit, especially when we use rings and stuff. I think that should about be good there. But yeah, I think we're on our way to achieving the S rank here in Wave Ocean. Uh, the best way to achieve S ranks in Sonic 06, which is really important for Sonic's story with how much he has to purchase in the shop, uh, collect a lot of rings. Uh, rings are pretty much the way to victory here. This was the first game to incorporate the ring bonus. Um, and yeah, it's really useful. Also, people with a keen eye will see that the ring model is actually from Sonic Unleashed, which is pretty cool. One thing you're seeing here uh, if you look at the cliff sides and stuff, you can see that some of the textures are messing up. That is because of the Xenia emulator. If you want to fix that while you're playing, you can just press back on the controller or uh, you can use F4. We'll refresh the assets and make things look like how they're supposed to, which is really nice. Mock Speed Sonic here, as you can tell. Um, he changed the texture well shader. Uh, no, that was just the textures being wrong. Uh, there on the cliff side. Yeah, it happens all the time, especially if you have a less powerful PC. I would say it happens more often, um, but it's just a consequence of playing on emulator, but I will happily play on the emulator so we can have these wickedly fast load times. Um, and there's 06 being 06. <laughs> Even with a mod that improves as much as Legacy of Solaris does, there's still, uh, some things that, uh, will never be will never be the same. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was scary. Uh, I think this should be fine. We'll see. We'll see if this is enough rings. If it's not enough rings, we're gonna... We're gonna time warp and restart because I really want to show this off because I think it's pretty fun. Uh, that should be enough for the S rank, which is nice. Hopefully all the rings we can, uh, we collected will be enough to get us over that 5,000 mark. But we got 4,000. Perfect. It should go exactly the way we want it to. The turning mad sensitive. Yes, the control in retail 06 is extremely precise. Even with all the fixes that the 06 mod manager and legacy of Solaris make to the game, 
Can't change those precise controls. <laughs> Anyway, one thing I want to mention is we got these new cool loading screens for each of the hub worlds. I don't know if those were a beta element or not, but they are very cool. Now that we're back in Castletown here, uh, before we do what we need to do to get to Dusty Desert, we have one optional town mission available to us. This is the only optional town mission I'm going to be doing in the game. And the reason that I'm doing this mission is it's going to get us over that 5,000 ring mark, which is very cool. So what this mission is, is the Shadows of Eggman's Mechs. Um, a very uh, good strategy for this in order to get the S rank is, well, one, not to take any damage. But you can see sometimes in these enemy formations, there are different, differently colored enemies. That don't denotes a leader of the group. If you destroy that leader, you are going to destroy every other uh, enemy in that formation, which is really nice. Thankfully, though, because the uh, point balances were not changed from Retail 06 to Legacy of Solaris, with all of the additions that Legacy of Solaris adds, it makes a lot of things easier to S rank, just because the control is a lot better. All right, buddy, I appreciate it, but uh, yeah, let's... <laughs> I'm glad to see you finally playing it. Yes, it's very cool. Very cool to play Legacy of Solaris. I should have easily gotten us the S rank. Uh, for this town mission, which, yep, we're set. Town missions, for most town missions, you only need 30,000 points instead of the 50,000 that the action stages normally need. Um, but yeah, very cool. That gets us over the 5,000 ring mark. The reason that I want to do that is that if we head back to the shop here, oh my goodness, the lag. Wait, why is the game lagging so much? I've never had this lag. Let me restart after saving. All right, back to what we were doing. Uh, we just completed mission two, the Shadow of Eggman's Mechs, which got us over 5,000 rings. Now, because we have over 5,000 rings, if we head on back over to the shop here, you may remember from before one, uh, Winder of a Shoemaker, before we did Wave Ocean, there was some extra items. One thing Legacy of Solaris changes is that we can actually get the gems a lot earlier than intended. And right here, we're going to purchase the red gem. Now, because we purchased the red gem, we don't have enough rings to get the anti-gravity slide, which we do need uh, for uh, to save this girl on top of the rooftop. But remember, this is Sonic 06, so we have a way around that. But talking real quick about the red gem, Legacy of Solaris does buff its effect. But as I said earlier, the patch to make it to where Sonic's action gauge actually depletes when using gems is in full force here. So while we can slow time, we do have a limited time to do so. Every gem, as far as I can tell, decreases the action gauge at the same amount. Now the red gem is a constant uh, drainage of the meter, but the other gems like the blue gem and stuff will use a single thing. All right. So, as we can tell, even though there's this gap that we should be able to easily get underneath, um, I'm sure the speedrunners of Sonic 06 know a much better way to do this, but uh, this is pretty funny here. Um, what we can do is we can just run against this wall, and if we run against it at the, the right angle, we can actually get on top of it, and then jump over the invisible wall. Then we can run on this little platform here, do a jump over here onto this little platform, and then another third platform here. And then we can do a water jump onto this spring that's here. I have no idea why this spring is here. You are not supposed to be in this part of Soliana Castle Town at this point in the story. But I'm glad that they put it here so we can get on top of this rooftop. And then all we have to do is get right on around here. And then we can do a spin dash in this corner next to the invisible wall. And if we get enough speed, we should be able to clip right through here. It's pretty finicky to do this, but, uh, yeah. Oh, they do have different drain rates. That's my bad. Uh, whenever I use the gems in Legacy of Solaris, it seems the same. Oh, crap. <laughs> we overshot it. Hold up. Yes, Retail 06 is held together by string and duct tape. Surprisingly, though, it's a very difficult game to crash. In case you fall off the roof, but you can't get back. Like, you can hit that spring in case you fall off the roof, but you can't get back. I believe those invisible walls, though, disappear if you uh, actually get the anti-grab slide. 
But hey, there we go. Now we can continue the game without needing the anti-gravity chip to do the anti-grav slide. And we now have the red gem for Sonic's Dusty Desert, which is pretty sick. So we have our first boss fight here, the Egg Cerberus, which can take anywhere from two to four hits to defeat. But because we have that red gem, we can slow down time, which allows us to run all the way over here. Before he does any sort of thing, we can grab a ring and then immediately... Oh, come on. Come back here. <laughs> come back here, boy. Looks like I was a little too slow on the uptake, so we're going to have to wait for this dude to chill the fuck out. There we go. Activate the red gem here just to make things a little bit easier. And then what we can do is in Sonic's version of the Egg Cerberus, if we ram him into the statues, we do double damage. There are two statues, therefore taking two hits. Now, things are going to get a little bit more complicated as we go through the uh, boss fight here. But again, we can use the red gem, and then that's going to let us immediately get back on while the Cerberus is turning around. And we can grab his horn again, and hopefully, dang, just missed the statue here. So we are going to have to hit him one more time. But thankfully, again, with the red gem, we are able to get over there, slow the Cerberus down, so that we're able to hop back on his horn, and then we're just going to have to wait for him to turn around. And then he's going to do one more. When he has one hit left, he turns around twice. And then we just got to toss him into a wall. And then there we go. Sonic, I won't let you get away. That does the boss fight, which is very nice. Completing that. Again, the load times are the way they are because of the... Uh, because I'm playing on the Xenia emulator. Which is pretty cool. There is the boss fight. I believe that's an S rank. I think boss fights are 40,000 points. Hey, there we go. Now, uh, when it comes to like the rest of Sonic's story, there isn't really a whole lot. Um, when it comes to like, like no cool tricks with like gems early and that kind of stuff, having the red gem early and, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, I just really wanted to show that off because I think it's really cool to have the red gem for Dusty Desert here. Moving on into Dusty Desert, again, you can see each level also has a custom splash screen, just like the uh, hub worlds do, which is really neat. Uh, and we are playing as Sonic and the Princess, which pretty much function how Retail 06 uh, does. I believe that one of the patches for uh, in the 06 mod manager that Legacy of Solaris auto, uh, auto like turns on is to increase the range of the shield here so you can actually use it to defeat enemies, which is cool. Uh, unfortunately, with Sonic and the Princess, we don't have access to the gems, so we're basically just going to play through Dusty Desert here. How many missions during stages are generally 50? Having the red gem helped a lot. Yes, having the red gem helps a lot with Egg Cerberus. That's why I wanted to show off that you can do that. It's a little bit finicky. I don't know if Jotaro necessarily intended for you to be able to get the red gem, but it's a cool thing if you, you know, do replay playthroughs a lot and uh, are able to be super duper efficient with your rings in order to get the red gem early. It's pretty fun. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. Red gem makes the S ranks free in boss fights. It does, but we do have to remember that we don't have infinite red gem uh, like we do in Retail 06. It actually is somewhat balanced here. So I wouldn't say that the S ranks are free now with the red gem, uh, but it certainly makes things a lot easier. A lot of combat encounters a lot easier as well. Slowest automation skip. We're trying our best, Cookie. <laughs> Thankfully, with uh, with the PO6 knowledge, I do know the layouts of these stages quite well, which is nice. Yo, what's up, Cosmic Oasis? Sorry I missed your intro, but happy Friday. How you doing? We are currently playing Sonic 06 Legacy of Solaris. Come on, get up to speed. Very nice. <laughs> They're filled with honey? Oh, interesting. <laughs> On the result screen is is quite slow. <laughs> kind of sucks that we don't get the fun tally, uh, the tally sound, but I think that's probably because I'm mashing. But hey, there we go. We got the S rank. Very nice. Fortunately, because we got the S rank, we have to see two of these. 
And of course, we'll save and then skip that cutscene. And then here we are back in Soliana Castle Town, fighting Silver the Hedgehog. This is another reason that I wanted the red gem because the red gem, this fight, if you know what you're doing, is already pretty trivial. But the red gem makes this fight even more trivial. All you gotta do is hold the red gem. When Silver is in the air, he's vulnerable to attack. So if you just run, you can hear him jump and then he does his little teleport dash so we can just constantly run to the other side. Uh, he's not in the air right now. You can run to the side. Once we hear him jump, we just activate that red gem. Oh shit. <laughs> Had to have one it's no use happen. Thankfully that was a good uh, set to it. <clears throat> Terra fail, I recommend uh, what I want you to do is I want you to search Sonic 06 on Twitch and tell me what pops up. Very nice. Completing silver. I believe that was six hits. But uh, yeah, the red gem completely trivializes that fight. Even though, again, if you know what you're doing, um, the red gem... Uh, the red gem isn't really necessary to make that fight easy, but it certainly makes it a lot easier, which is nice. Completing silver here, and now we've got plenty of rings to spend at the shop, which is very fun. Almost 10,000 even. Do you sure can spam green gem as well? I've never done that fight with the green gem. I've always gotten the red gem first, so I'm not sure. That unlocks the ability to play as Silver, which is very cool. We'll be playing that eventually. Additionally, because we played as Tails in Wave Ocean, we also have access to Tails' story, which is cool. Got some artifacts here. Again, F4 or back on the controller if you're using a controller does that. Now that we're back in Soliana Castle Town, uh, we do have three new missions available to us. We've got Mission 3, Find Pele the Beloved Dog. Mission 4, the Soliana Boys Challenge. And then Mission 5, which is the required mission. Um, but we are only going to be doing the required missions from here on out in Sonic Story. Checking the shop, we now have the ability to purchase the blue gem, and you know that I'm buying that right now. We can also buy the anti-gravity since we're here and we haven't purchased it yet. The anti-gravity works uh, in a bit of an interesting way. Because Sonic Team really liked putting everything on one button, even though the games were getting more and more complicated... In order to use Sonic's different actions, which is something I just kind of want to highlight now that we have the anti-grav chip, if you want to do the spin kick, you just press X, and that's it. If you want to use the anti-grav slide, you hold X while you're moving with Sonic, and then to activate the anti-grav slide, it activates when you let go. So you don't just hold the button and it'll do the anti-grav slide, you have to let go of the button in order to do it. And if you want to cancel the slide at any point, uh, before it ends automatically, you can just press X again and that automatically gets rid of it. If you want to do Sonic Spin Dash, which uh, is a move for sure in this game, you have to be standing completely still. I like the release system way more than holding. I think it's kind of nice considering that there's multiple buttons uh, for it. Um, I honestly, like the release system is kind of nice, but the holding does make more sense in terms of how it works. Now we have the blue gem. The blue gem gives us a burst of speed, a pretty crazy burst of speed, in fact. And as I talk about in the install video, I do have some extra patches that Legacy of Solaris does not have on by default. And one of them is to stop blue gem bonk bonking. So we can just use the blue gem to fly around at, you know, sonic speed and actually uh, feel like we're playing a sonic game, which is really nice. All right, moving on here. We're going to talk to this guy and do uh, town mission number five, who's the captain. In order to do who's the captain, uh, because you know it's not dire that the princess is in danger or anything, so we have to play guessing games with the, you know, the royal guard, is we have to figure out who the captain is. So what we have to do is we have to go around and talk to these other guards. Captain, that's Guido. The thing is, is I believe in the text it says that... Uh, or this is kind of one of those, like, figuring out who's lying games. Uh, so this guy says that it's Guido. And what was his name? His name was Fabio. Okay. And you can see on the mini-map here, we have access to talking to every... Or shows us who we can talk to, I guess. I told you the captain is in front of the fountain. Okay, interesting. Uh, that's Alessio. 
moving on. So right now, it could just be the guy that we talked to in order to initiate the mission. Um, let's talk to this guy over here. The captain is one of the men you've already spoken to. But that's interesting because he says the captain's Guido. But uh, we want to talk to everybody. Let's see if there's a guard over here. Hey. What Alessio said is true. Okay, so if what Alessio said is true, if we talk to him again, I believe he was the one right up here. The captain is in front of the fountain. <laughs> that means that this guard hey. is the captain. All of that, all of that. The princess is in danger, dude. <laughs> the princess is in danger. And you made us play that stupid guessing game just for you to be the captain anyway. Kind of ridiculous. Obviously, you don't need to talk to everybody. You don't need to talk to every guard in that mission. It's always the it's always that guy. That's the captain. So you can uh, <clears throat> so you can just talk to him right away and get an easy S rank because you can complete the stage in like less than a second. The princess can wait. All, re all right. Blah. New hub world time. There are three hub worlds in Sonic 06. This one being New City. This is my personal favorite hub world, even though I don't care for the hub worlds too much, mostly because of the music. This is one of my favorite tracks from the 06 soundtrack. If you're wondering if you have to go back to Castletown, which we currently cannot do, we cannot go through the gate once we go through. Uh, so those town missions that were in Soliana Castletown are at the moment locked out to us. We cannot access them. Um, but you may also be like, wait a minute, the shop isn't accessible as well. I, w I bring this up every time we play Retail 06 on stream or in a YouTube video is that... Um, when I was younger, I had literally no idea that this was a shop. I had no idea that you could interact with it in any way like that, but this is the shop. These are the shops that appear in New City and the next hub world that we will be getting to. So if you want to purchase more stuff, you are able to do that right here. Uh, the only thing we have available to purchase is the green gem, but we do not have the ability to purchase it yet. Once we are in New City, uh, there are a lot of town missions available to us. Well, sort of. Right now, right when we enter New City, we have access to Mission 6, which is the Hotel Festival of Rings, and Mission 7, which is destroying all the enemies in New City. So if you want to collect some more rings to buy more stuff in the shop, you can do that. But what we need to do is just run on over to the warehouse to do the required mission, Mission 11, before we meet Knuckles. Uh, this one's pretty easy. We got the red gem and the anti-grav chip, so we are just going to absolutely obliterate this mission. Um... The anti-grav slide is pretty fun. It's a lot more useful in Retail 06 because of how the homing attack works versus Legacy of Solaris because in Legacy of Solaris, you can spam the homing attack. There's no delay to uh, the actions, so... But uh, it's kind of fun just for a little variety we can do here or there. Do a little here or there. Um, very cool. Yo, what's up, Pecrean? How you doing? Welcome to Legacy of Solaris. Let's see, we get to see a bit of the spam attack right there on this multi-hit enemy, absolutely obliterating him. Thank goodness. <laughs> you can also see another thing that was added is Sonic has some unused, like, homing attack uh, recover animations versus just the standard one that was used in Retail 06, which was that one you saw right there. Uh, adds a little bit of variety, which is pretty nice to it. Legacy of Solaris is really fun to play. Those anims are used in Retail? It is, but just the white gem, right? Goodness, we've got Mr. Actually Gordon Ramsay in chat right now. <laughs> do, 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 do. That was incredible. Are they using PO6? They are. But the thing is, is that I'm not going to be talking about comparisons between PO6 and Legacy of Solaris unless directly, uh, unless it's directly a thing that we need to talk about. <clears throat> but yes, they are used in PO6. Do, 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 do. That's kind of neat. Oh, here we go. This building's looking a little bit festive, I must say. I wonder if they're celebrating something. Nah, just another artifact thing. Uh, as we do that, we don't have quite enough rings to purchase the... Um, 
purchase the green gem yet, so we're just gonna head over to the next mission we have to do. A new mission opens up once we complete a uh, battle at the warehouse. It's mission eight, the legend of the three musketeers. So if you want to collect some more rings, you can do that. But where we're headed to next is just over yonder here as we do our next town mission, mission 12, which is open the cave gate. Again, this is just another fighting enemy mission. So the red gem is your friend here uh, as we slow down time and are able to just destroy the crap out of every single enemy without uh, much fighting from them, which is pretty nice. Again, especially with how the homing attack works, we're able to complete these missions so fast that uh, we're able to get the S rank or at least an A rank pretty easily. Very nice here. Uh, Knuckles kind of getting in the way of our victory. <laughs> this result screen is, is pretty funny. I gotta say. There we go, get an S rank. Uh, and 2,000 rings from that one. I don't know if it's because it's a required mission or not, but I think, uh... I think just different town missions, I guess, depending on difficulty, give a different amount of rings. So, let's go ahead before we enter White Acropolis here and head back over to the shop and grab our green gem. And that is currently everything that is available to us in the shop before we head over to White Acropolis. So moving on here, again, this is why I wanted to have the blue gem. It makes hub world traversal so much better with how big and empty they are. Moving on here into White Acropolis, we're going to be seeing our first instance of Snowboard Sonic here, which does have some changes to him. One of the extra patches I do have is uh, unlocking the snowboard movement in the air, which is very nice. Um, but the main thing is that uh, there is a sort of physics to it now. You do still press forward to go but you don't have to hold the control stick forward in order to let the snowboard keep moving. If you want to slow down on the snowboard, you can hold back on the control stick. But as you can see, while we're in the air, we do have the unused trick animations here in Legacy of Solaris, which is some pretty neat stuff. As we move on here. One thing I did forget to mention when we just bought the green gem is the green gem enables us to do the tornado kick, which we'll see when we enter section two of White Acropolis here. Um, the Tornado Kick, it's pretty good. It's buffed in Legacy of Solaris to have an increased range. Um, and, uh, it's pretty decent for crowd control, but personally for me, because of how the homing attack works, I don't find the green gem all too useful. But, uh, the anti-grav jump one looks so cool. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Whoa! <laughs> Getting a, a face full of Sonic right there with the camera. But, uh, let's go ahead and do one more jump as we infiltrate Eggman's base here. Moving on here, does the box glitch still exist with the green gem legacy of Solaris? I have genuinely have no idea what you're talking about. So as you can see the green gem there, you can activate it on the ground or in the air. I always recommend uh, doing it in the air because the animation in the air is faster. So yeah, just to, just use the green gem there. There it is. You are able to buy it, you know, as early as completing wave ocean. Uh, well, not necessarily completing wave ocean, kind of what I did with the uh, Mission 1 and Mission 2, the Shadow of Eggman's mechs uh, to get over to... or to get over 5,000 rings and purchase the green gem if you want to use it earlier than I did. Again, we got some 06 jank, and of course we gotta talk about the White Acropolis DLC. We got enough speed there with the blue gem, we just take damage on that laser gate, fall to the other side, and then uh, use the blue gem, and that gives us enough speed to clip through that invisible wall, and uh, just head straight to the end here of White Acropolis. Uh, even in Retail 06, unsurprisingly, the Tales section of White Acropolis is, uh, DLC. <laughs> but don't worry if you're a fan of Tales, we are going to be seeing plenty of him in this playthrough, so I weren't about it. Weren't, wouldn't worry about it. Very cool. What I recommend doing as well, that I forgot to say while we were at the shop, is that that shop visit was the final time you could purchase stuff before, uh, for a while. So... Uh, we're not going to be going to a hub world again uh, for a long time. Uh, we have a couple stages before we do that since we do get flung into the future. So uh, before you enter White Acropolis is when you want to uh, make sure your brain, come on. Want to make sure you have all the gear that you want before heading into these stages. As we skip these cutscenes here, we are now in the future and we're going to begin with Crisis City. Crisis City is a behemoth of a stage in Legacy of Solaris. It is the longest stage 
I'm pretty sure out of any story in the game, Sonic's Crisis City. So uh, we're in for the long haul here. I definitely recommend having, you know, at the very minimum, having the red gem available to you to help you out if you really want to get that S rank. But uh, as we start in Crisis City here, again, we are on the snowboard that is somehow levitating above the ground, which is kind of cool. <laughs> but very, very nice. Do, do. How you guys enjoying the playthrough so far? Let me know. Let me know. And if you're on YouTube, let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this. And this is a, a nice little deviation from doing the normal PO6 stuff. I hope that uh, I'm not stuttering over my words too much. There's a lot of information I want to talk about as we uh, go through here. The 360 is not possible in Legacy of Solaris. You can't turn around quickly enough. Moving on here into Section 2 of Crisis City. You may think because we have the blue gem, the blue gem would be pretty useful. Unfortunately, the blue gem is not terribly useful in stages. And the reason for this is because um, when you jump, when you use a blue gem and jump, you lose all your speed. It only affects Sonic's ground speed. So uh, unfortunately, uh, we aren't going to be using it too terribly much because it doesn't give us any extra air speed. Uh, so we just kind of got to play through as we do basically frontiers. Yeah, I guess they were trying to call back to 06 or something. But if you want to, you know, to use the action gauge, you've got that green gem for the combat encounters and also the red gem is available as well. Here's our first instance of this. I don't believe I picked it up in Wave Ocean. Legacy of Solaris does restore the uh, shield item that was supposed to be in retail 06, but was not. Uh, so it's very cool. It works just like the shield in Sonic Adventure or Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, you just take one hit, uh, or it takes the hit for you, and you don't lose rings. Another thing is this spline was fixed, so we actually collect all of the rings that are in that section there, which is really nice. Murders the momentum? Yeah, it does. One thing that I do want to talk about when it comes to the red gem is you may be seeing when I use the red gem that the camera slows down. How the red gem works, at least as far as I understand it, in retail 06 is that it halves the time of everything in the game and then doubles sonic speed so sonic moves normal uh so that's how it works and because it slows down everything it also slows down camera movements so if you're wondering when you use the red gem why it like you know slows or why the camera gets slow that's why because it slows everything which is pretty crazy do 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 Moving on here through section three, this can be a pretty dangerous uh, section of Crisis City. But thankfully, uh, with the new legacy of Solaris, like movement and everything kind of being a little bit better, uh, it's very, very nice. What we're gonna see here, uh, <laughs> well, okay, maybe not. <laughs> Does it slow the time too? Yes, it slows the in-game timer. So it's a lot easier to get S ranks and stuff. Right, let's see if we can actually I don't think we can do this plus we can show this off I am pretty sure that the pole swinging animation was not in retail 06 at all uh, my memory is a bit foggy on that I'm sure someone in chat will correct me if I'm incorrect or uh, I'll put a little blurb on the screen here but something more interesting as you see is we did not go into the mock speed section what we have right here in crisis city is the restored section D so if you did not know, uh, section, uh, sections in Sonic 06, like the stages are divided into sections and the sections are lettered. Uh, so for Crisis City, for Sonic, for instance, the snowboard section was section A, the second section was section B, the uh, tornado section was section C, and then right here is section D. It is not in the final game. You go straight to the mock speed section, which in the game code is section E. But uh, it's restored here. It's very similar to section B, which is the second section we went through. But there are some cool uh, little quirks about this. So right here, we can just head on right over here. And a cool new little like thing is, is that we get to go on top of these buildings. Uh, we'll go ahead and use the green gem here as we fly through this. Ow. <laughs> I mean, in theory, you could somehow swing on it. Ah, gotcha. 
All right, <clears throat> moving on here. We got a cool little set piece with Sonic grinding on these rails. Lots of slowdown, uh, which is <laughs> not very surprising. All of the glass breaking creates a whole bunch of objects that uh, the game has to render. And then probably the most noteworthy part that's honestly pretty cool is in section D, there's this little section at the end where we go up through this tower, uh, kind of going on the sides of these things. Unfortunately, it's just dash panel and automation central, but still a really cool set piece to have. Yeah, Gordon, you worked directly on section D, didn't you? All right, here we go. The mock speed section now into more familiar territory here. Uh, as we head through the mock speed section, this is the most annoying mock speed section in the entire game. Uh, in my opinion, anyway. Because we do, we are in retail 06 still, so we do have all of the trappings of Mock Speed Sonic in that game. Even though we can't control our mid-air momentum now, we still, uh, even as much stub our toe, we will take some damage, which definitely stinks. But uh, thankfully, light dashing makes you invincible, so you want to light dash as much as possible. Remember that light dash is now remapped to the Y button, uh, so you don't have to worry about any of that context sensitivity issues. Uh, when it comes to trying to do multiple actions on one button. And also, the Crisis City Tornado uh, looks a lot more like how it did in the E3 version of Crisis City. At least that's what the notes that... Um... Let me actually check the notes here to make sure that's uh, correct. <clears throat> yes, the Mock Speed Tornado has been visually upgraded to have better fire, dust, and lightning particles to resemble the one seen in the E3 demo. So, very cool there. I'm going to be doing the extra stages. I'm not going to be doing very hard. All right, moving on here. Again, that's why Crisis City is a behemoth. With the addition of Section D, it is a five-section long stage, which can be really tough. Holy crap, textures. <laughs> Again, that's uh, just F4 or back on the controller if you're using an Xbox controller to do this. I am a little bit late in saying this, but I will say this in the install tutorial, is that this is Xbox 360 only. If you want to use uh, a cool thing about Legacy of Solaris is that you can actually run it. As far as I know, it may not be in the final build here, but I'm pretty sure you can still run it on official hardware. So if you mod your Xbox 360, you can actually play Legacy of Solaris on there. Back on the controller, like D-pad back, it's this button. If you look at my, uh, my controller input, that's why I have it there. The button that just turned white is the button that refreshes the uh, textures. Wanting the E3 demo to get leaked. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can still download the E3 demo off of Xbox Live, but maybe that's wrong. 06 mods are hardware compatible. Yes, it's very cool. Legacy of Solaris is fully playable on the Xbox 360, though I prefer playing it on Xenia. Um, when it comes to extracting the ISO off of your Xbox 360, the Xbox 360 is actually one of the easiest games to extract the ISO from. So, which is really nice when it comes to wanting to play 06 on Xenia. Ow. <laughs> That's not anymore. That's true. Uh, so if you want the full version of Legacy of Solaris, uh, you have to use it on... Uh, you have to use it on Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 version of Sonic 06 is the better version of the game anyway. Um, the only time I would recommend emulating 06 on... PS3 on the PS3 emulator as if Xenia doesn't work for you for whatever reason. Like a sus of Solaris. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, the Among Us never goes away, does it, Gordon? Yeah, uh, Flame Core talking about it a little bit. We've got a two section stage ahead of us here. It's not too bad. Uh, the blue gem is somewhat useful because we do have some long stretches of, of things. But like I've said before, with our current gem toolkit, the best gem we have right now is the red gem. You can. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the Super Gaming Brothers as they've demonstrated the best. But you can get hit by those meteors in Flame Core Section 1, which is kind of nice. Never played Among Us, but it never goes away. Among Us seems like a very fun game. Like, I never played it myself, but, like, playing that, like, just playing a quick game on the phone seems pretty cool. Where'd you get the ROM? This is from the 360. Considering that is, that it is illegal to distribute a 
uh, ROM and download a ROM. Uh, I'd prefer to not do that. Do. But however you acquire your ISO, that's, uh, it's not up to me. But I definitely don't condone downloading a ROM off the internet. Because that's pirating and that's bad. Do. Very fun community game. Yeah, it seems like it. Is it still super popular? Because I know it was like almost Fortnite levels of popularity for a while. Downloading the game on your hard drive? Yes, it's very nice. All right, switching to Knuckles here. Uh, Knuckles has a few things better. One thing that I mentioned with Tails that's the same with Knuckles is that his speed has been increased to Sonic's default running speed, uh, which is very nice. We do, of course, still have access to the screwdriver and all that, but uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of Knuckles as we, um, as uh, he has his own story available to him. But uh, for right now, we're just uh, playing as him here in Flame Core. If you actually want to, you can completely bypass switching to Knuckles here, and Sonic can actually complete this section because his homing attack activates those orbs. But there we go. Knuckles finishing that for us as we head through the final part of uh, Flame Core here. I do a little spin kick there, defeat that enemy. And then use a bit of the blue gem to go down this tube as Jason Griffith yells with all of his might. Feels surreal? Uh-huh. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool that we've got uh, all these cool ways to play 06 now that are much better than the original game. That was incredible. Do, do. Getting an S rank, my god. I did not expect to get an S rank there. That's very cool. Do, 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 do. On the XBLA store? Oh, okay. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Does the jump spin deal damage? It does not. Uh, I don't know if that's something that's a patch that may be a work in progress, but as far as I know, it does not. All right, here we go. One of the most infamous bosses from Sonic 06 is Iblis Phase 2. Thank goodness Legacy of Solaris helps us out an insane amount with this boss fight. The amount of hits it takes to defeat Iblis Phase 2 is halved. Thank God. The strategy that I'm doing here for Iblis Phase 2 is uh, what I'm doing is just grabbing rings and taking damage in the lava there. And then doing that will get me right over to the uh, orb here that's going to cause Iblis to jump toward us. But uh, of course, the reason it was really bad in the original game was because we got to sit here and wait for Iblis to charge at us. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, dang. Missed the hit there. <laughs> All right. Trying again here. Again, like I said, Iblis... Uh, in Legacy of Solaris, it does wonders. I recommend using the blue gem that allows you to get across the lava really fast and to grab a ring if possible while you're in your invincibility frames. That way you can take a hit from Iblis here if uh, you need to. So what happens is uh, Iblis just sits there and once we hit this thing, he's gonna go into the lava and then jump out and try to attack us. You cannot be standing on the platform, so you have to do a jump away from the platform, and then once he lands, you can jump back and do a quick hit on him, just like that. If that may be too difficult for you or you're having trouble with that, you can wait, and Iblis will spawn platforms that uh, lead all the way toward the light uh, cores here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fall in the lava here, take some damage, and then we're going to run over here. And I'll take some more damage because I'm bad at this game. Hit this orb and Iblis should pop out of the lava here. Jump away. And then we are just one hit from defeating Iblis phase two, which is so nice. I believe that in retail 06, Iblis took six hits. And this fight is just ungodly long. If you don't do these skips with the invincibility frames and, you know, wait for his attacks and wait for the lava and all that stuff, it is incredibly aggravating. But uh, thankfully here in Legacy of Solaris, there is not nearly as much of a problem. So we just got one final hit here as he lunges toward us. Jump away, hit him, and that is it. Really? He took four? I, it definitely feels like he takes more than four hits in retail. But I still appreciate the reduced health anyway.
with uh, Legacy of Solaris here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And there we are. We finished up Sonic that Flame Core. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I know. 06 got relisted. That's how I played it for the uh, marathon. What's up, Adam? Welcome to the stream. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it happens, mayonnaise. But hey, I'm glad you're here, man. The result screen song is very nice. I agree with you. So moving on here, we are finally back from the future in the present, which means that we can access the shop again. Once you come back from the future here and you have Tails and Knuckles with you, which is just fine, all of the town missions that we couldn't do are available to us again here in New City. We still cannot go back to Castletown. Uh, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer before we can uh, have those optional missions available to us as well there. But now, before we head to Radical Train, we have two new missions. Mission 9, Chase the Fleeing Car, and Mission 10, Acrobatic Circus Scout. So if you want to collect some more rings, you can do that there. But we have completed a lot of stages, so we've got some rings available to us. The only new item here is the bounce bracelet. So we're going to go ahead and purchase that. And everything else is the same in the store if you did not have the chance to purchase it just yet. We're going to use the bounce bracelet over here to get ourselves into Radical Train from the train station. You just come over here to this. This is your bounce bracelet tutorial as we go in here and then hop into Radical Train. Radical Train, pretty fun stage, has a mock speed section. Um... I quite enjoy it. It's one of my favorite stages, and it's got some of my, uh, I would say, more underappreciated theme uh, themes in Sonic 06. Both the Abandoned Mine, which is the track that plays in Section 1 here, and uh, The Chase, which is played in Section 2, are both very good songs. I mean, it's not a hot take to say that uh, the soundtrack of Retail Sonic 06 uh, is incredible, but um, it's just even... Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, even even though the song is incredible, I still think it isn't appreciated as much as it could be. But on uh, Radical Train here, again, recommend the blue gem because we've got these conveyor belts and we have the bounce bracelet. A change that was made in Legacy of Solaris. Again, I don't believe if this is a patch or if this is something that was actually added to Legacy of Solaris is you have free movement when you do the bounce attack, which is really nice. Uh, it only takes two bounces, I believe, to get to max height. It might be longer than that, but it's very nice. All right, here we go here. These orange guys are leaders, so if you want to defeat all of the enemies there, you can just do that. And hitting the switch there to keep the train from going. Fun fact, uh, with how the dialogue plays out in Radical Train here, it makes you think that the train that we're chasing here in Section 1 is actually Elise's train. It is not. The train in section one here is actually a train with a bunch of civilians on it. Uh, I believe there's some unused dialogue that uh, has the humans like screaming at Sonic, like screaming for help and everything, uh, which is pretty neat. But we're almost to the end of section one here. Just going to hop on these springs and then do a little bit of uh, fancy moving around here. Do, 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 do. It's called the bound jump. Oh, crap. I got out nerded. Woe is me. Moving on here. <clears throat> we are in the mock speed section. This mock speed section can be a little bit difficult, but uh, at the beginning there, the best thing to do is to do the light dash and just hold right. I'm going to go ahead and skip that um, and just take some damage boosts there in order to skip, uh, to skip a little bit of automation there and just head through those rings. I'm not the best at retail 06, but I do know a few tricks and uh, just kind of want to show them off if I can. I have the chance to. Uh, moving on here, we just got to avoid these blasts or just take the blast head first. Got to love the ring system. See if we can grab this invincibility, which unfortunately doesn't have any effect. But if we go ahead and skip those dash panels here, you actually still activate the goal ring as long as you're right next to the train. Uh, so we just do that and then head on here with Sonic in Radical Train. Do, 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 do. <laughs> very cool very cool i hope everyone's enjoying the playthrough so far i'm actually having quite a bit of fun i didn't realize how much fun i would have kind of explaining all of these things uh when it comes to come to this yeah the song is very very good all right moving on here we are now in the forest hub world fighting the egg genesis 
The Egg Genesis is a uh, okay boss fight. He takes four hits. Um, an interesting thing, probably a more well-known thing about Retail 06, is both Sonic and Silver fight the Egg Genesis. How you're supposed to fight the Egg Genesis, which with Sonic, I should say, which I'll do for the first hit here, is you wait for all of his attacks, and then he's going to lower himself and then throw out some enemies. Uh, once he spawns these enemies, we can just take them up here, run up his arm just like this, and then we go to his head here, and then do two bounce attacks, and that does a quarter of his damage, and we lose an arm. However, because 06 is 06, what we are going to do... Oh, this game, so yeah, the invincibility doesn't work in uh, mock speed in retail 06. If we wait for him to lower himself, and we do the bound jump to get max height... We can actually do two homing attacks to hit the core there at the bottom. That's supposed to be Silver's hitbox, but they didn't, you know, disable the hitbox for Sonic's portion of the fight. Uh, I do recommend the blue gem. I actually recommend it over the red gem. Uh, so when you have that lock on laser, you can just use the blue gem to get out of target right away. I mean, just running away will also pretty much guarantee you not getting hit, but it is really fun to use the blue gem in this big open space here as we uh, wait for the Egg Genesis to do its thing. It pretty much does the exact same thing for all four cycles of this fight, uh, so we don't really have to worry about any new strategies other than that laser that happens here. But we're just going to hit that guy at the very end, get stuck in the hitbox. You can see that Sonic was not meant to uh, be able to hit that. And it's going to rise in the air and try to come crashing down on us. Oh no, whatever will happen. Uh, we can just kind of use the blue gem to avoid it. And, uh, yeah. So, don't have to worry about any of that. Completing the Egg Genesis. Do-do-do-do. Yeah, 06 is a pretty silly game, which is pretty funny. You can do a lot of stuff. Where is your aim? I believe that the Egg Genesis is actually a robot. I don't think Eggman's actually piloting it. Uh, and I think it has more credence in Silver Story to do that all right since we defeated the egg genesis normally in retail 06 you would actually be uh the sonic and the princess character in the forest just like this but uh legacy of solaris just is like we want to get a move on which i agree with and just sends us straight into tropical jungle which is pretty nice so moving on straight into tropical jungle here uh with sonic and the princess uh extremely similar move set again none of the upgrades uh, other than the anti-grab slide... Oh. <laughs> None of the upgrades other than the anti-grab slide uh, in Tropical Jungle here uh, actually affect Sonic and the Princess, so, you know, it's whatever. I don't actually know if, since you don't have to purchase the anti-grab slide, if Sonic and the Princess can't do the anti-grab slide unless you purchase the upgrade. I'm not entirely sure because you're not supposed to not be able to have the upgrade for that. But uh, here we go through Tropical Jungle. Tropical Jungle, uh, I've talked about many times on stream. Both Dusty Desert Section 1 and Tropical Jungle are some of my favorite level design in the entire game. What's just really unfortunate is that you're Sonic and the Princess, <laughs> which leads to the sections being quite underutilized, which is super unfortunate. Mock Speed Sonic can light dash without the light chip. Oh, that is interesting. Do, do. Do, 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 do. Power just died. I'm not going to be here for a while. If I'm mobile's day is slow as fuck. Hey, that's okay, TerraFail. You can always catch the YouTube video on this. I'm going to be putting a lot of work into this, so I really hope that people who are on the YouTube video enjoy it. All right, got to be very careful here. These vines can be finicky sometimes. Yeah, Mox Speed and Normal Sonic are two different characters, but the reason I say that, uh, Celerity... At least I believe that's how you say your name. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is um, that Sonic and the Princess are also a different character from regular Sonic. That's why I was curious if he could uh, do the anti-grab slide. Celerity? Okay, great. Good to hear. Welcome to the stream. Very interesting. Anybody who's here th for the first time, I don't normally play Legacy of Solaris, but it's such a cool mod for Retail 06, and I actually have fun while I'm playing it. <laughs> um... Uh, compared to just playing Retail 06 that I really wanted to show it off. 
Uh, because I think it's a really, really neat mod for the game. It's also one of the biggest mods I've ever seen for any video game at all. There is a lot of content in this game and a lot of people worked on it. So huge shout outs to everyone who made uh, Legacy of Solaris possible. Because it's very cool. All right, that's Tropical Jungle. Again, section two being a massive section with lots of different multiple pathways that you can take to get to the goal ring. But again, unfortunately, it's just the, the trapping that were Sonic and the Princess kind of stunts some of that creativity. That is a lot of Sonic. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. All right. Cool, cool. Apologies, I am a little bit under the weather. I do think I have a little bit of a cold, but moving on here, we're done with Tropical Jungle. All right, yo, what's up, Joss? How you doing? Moving on here in Sonic Story, Princess Elise kidnapped yet again. We are now back in Castle Town. So once we went to New City, all of those optional town missions were locked off from us until this point. So now that we're back in Castletown, if you want to do maybe some town missions that you may have missed um, or, you know, don't feel like doing them at all, then don't worry about it. <laughs> but this is the biggest uh, change in terms of the town missions that are available to us now. Here in Castletown, uh, we have missions. Uh, mission 13, Mel's the Soliana running legend and mission 15 versus Sonic Man. Which, who knows, we may do after I finish the playthrough. I'm not entirely sure. Um, uh, to do. So, if you want to collect some more rings, I recommend doing that. But we have a boatload of rings now. So, let's go ahead and head on over. Thanks for the hydrate. I'll be sure to do that. Let's head on over to the shop and see what's available to us now. Pre-Kingdom Valley, uh, which is the next stage we're headed to. The only new gem we have access to is the white gem, which we'll go ahead and purchase up right here. Uh, which gives us the homing smash, which unfortunately is pretty much a useless ability, even here in Legacy of Solaris. What you do is you jump, and if you hold RT in the air, you can infinitely charge this homing attack, and then when you let go, you do uh, literally just a homing attack. That's it. Uh, the only difference in Retail 06 is that there was a different uh, animation that Sonic used for recovery if you did that, but uh, here in Legacy of Solaris, because those are uh, animations that are already inherent to Sonic. Uh, oh, well. There's more than that. What can it do in Legacy of Solaris? In my plane of Legacy of Solaris, I haven't seen any difference. Feel free to correct me, Gordon. What we're going to do now is we are going to talk to the bishop here, and he is going to send us over to the Soliana Forest. In the Soliana Forest here, I believe, let me check real quick, that we are locked off from going back to Castletown. Uh, looks like we are, unfortunately. So if you want to do those optional missions, you need to do them before you talk to the bishop. Uh, the forest here is our last hub world and the most open and lame. Ragdoll into each other for chain kills. Hey, there you go. Something that I didn't know. The more you know, I appreciate the correction. That's the fun part about doing this live. So if uh, if you didn't see Gordon's message there, the homing smash, uh, it deals smash damage, which means if an enemy is guarding, uh, it'll cut right through that. And then uh, defeated enemies will ragdoll into each other, which allows uh, for multi-kills. While we're in the forest though, I do want to say that if you didn't get the chance to purchase your items in Castletown, maybe you didn't have enough rings or something, you can head on over here because this will be a shop that you can access and uh, purchase the items from here as well. Um, you also have the ability to do uh, one optional town mission because the other three are required, which is take the lady in waiting to town, uh, which was that lady right there by the shop. So moving on here, we see Tails kind of hanging out with us. And what we need to do now are the Trials of Soliana. The first one up being the Trial of Knowledge. The Trial of Knowledge is a guessing game. Uh, you have to go through the portals in the right order. The red gem is great for this because uh, it's strictly time-based. So you just have to go through the right portals. So the first one is the right portal 
Then the next one here is this portal. Sends us to the top of the tree here at three. I believe the next portal is this one. Yep. And then the final portal. Oh, I can't quite remember which one it is. I believe it's this one over here. Oh, dang. It's not that one. And then four is maybe this portal. Yes, it is. All right. There we go. Then we hit that spring and hit the goal ring. And that's it. That is the trial of knowledge. Not really much of an of a test of intelligence, more of a test of memorization. Enemies, for instance, will flinch from it. That's interesting. I didn't know the regular homing attack could deal smash damage. Do 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 do. Really cool. You can smash enemies, yo. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. That was the first trial of Soliana there. Moving on here to the next trial is the trial of courage. This one can actually be a pretty difficult mission and where a lot of people on their first playthrough of 06, this or Legacy of Solaris will get a game over. Uh, highly, highly recommend the red gem for this one. Uh, it can be very useful, but maybe just for some variety, I'll show the white gem out. Uh, one thing that you've seen throughout these playthroughs that I haven't quite talked about yet is that the uh, the mini-map that's in the upper right will show us where enemies and town missions are. Town missions are uh, are highlighted in blue, uh, our NPCs that give us town missions. Uh, I actually believe I missed a spring. There we go. So moving on here, another thing about the Trial of Courage is you have zero rings, uh, so that can happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have a, a lot of issues there. But the most annoying thing about this is that it completely knocks you out of the mission. Thankfully, because we're playing on Xenia, the load screens are pretty much a non-issue. So we can uh, just head on back through here. And we have to defeat all these enemies with zero rings. So, uh, do, 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 do. Death count, anyone? Dude, this streamer is so bad at playing this game. Right. Any enemies there? That enemy, I think we just have two more after this. These are the last two. Oh no, one more. We got this big, uh, this big old walker here. And there we go, just a couple jump dashes and bounce attacks, defeating those guys and finishing off the Trial of Courage. Do 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 do. Pretty much uh, one of those other guaranteed S ranks because you kind of have to do it pretty quickly. Yeah, dying on purpose for the content, yep, because I'm definitely not editing out all of those deaths. <laughs> do. All right, here we go. On to our final trial, the trial of love. Hey. Kind of a weird thing because there's not a whole lot you can do. You just run over to Amy's portal here, choose that, say, is Amy really the one? And there you go. Hey. That's it. I don't really know why that's much of a mission. Funny thing is no matter how long you take in that mission, you are always going to get 30,000 points and get the S rank. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Amy's Amy's the only one available there. Do 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 do. All right, there we go. Trial of Love finished. Once you finish all three trials, I recommend opening up the menu and saving, because if you do not manually save and you get a game over in Kingdom Valley, you will have to do all of those trials again. Everything before. Uh, once you finish Radical Train. Oh my goodness. It, it would be terrible. It would be absolutely terrible. What's up, Tails? Moving on here into our penultimate stage, Kingdom Valley. With Silver now on our side. We'll go ahead and, uh, you know, just kind of play through Kingdom Valley. It's quite a long stage. Four sections ending with our final mock speed section. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, the iconic stage from 06. It's what a lot of people remember from it. Uh, I would say it's kind of interesting because when 06 first, uh, first released, a lot of people were pretty, 
uh bias toward crisis city being the best level in the game but as kind of the reputation of 06 has gone on a lot of people have taken a liking to uh sonic's kingdom valley specifically section one here is again one of my favorite sections of the game tons of multiple pathways and routes to take as you uh as you go through here which is pretty cool as we uh, move on here i recommend the blue gem of course uh getting stuck on the ceiling little spider sonic there um, unfortunately, the blue gem's pretty much our only movement gem right now, so... The red gem, green gem, white gem, of course, nice to have, but not really necessary. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and wait for the eagle here. Don't want to jump into the trigger and take the chance to die. As we move on here into section two, we are going to be seeing our first character switch over to Silver the Hedgehog. Silver the Hedgehog in um, in Legacy of Solaris has his PO6 running animation, courtesy of Chaos X. So he's sped up to the speed of Sonic and has the running animation, which is very cool. However, a lot of what he does functions exactly like Retail 06. Additionally, each section of Kingdom Valley has a different skybox, with Section 2 here having a, a more overcast uh, sky compared to the regular sky. Another thing is this new wind collision here. That's very cool. So if you want to get some extra goodies, if you go up here, you can. Uh, but with silver, of course, we have the ability to do the hover, which, of course, you can feather the button and then get a buttload more distance. If you press the X button, you get to use his pimp slap, which has been drastically buffed in uh, Legacy of Solaris. You're able to do one stun slap like I did right there from a decent range and be able to utterly obliterate groups of enemies, which is really nice. But another thing you can see here is we're actually using the unused HUD. Sonic, Shadow, and Silver were all supposed to have unique HUD colors uh, for when you played as characters that are in their story. And right here, switching over to Silver and Sonic's Kingdom Valley, we get to see a little bit of that, which is pretty cool. Another thing right here, you can see some lasers were added to Section 2 of Kingdom Valley, so that way we can't, uh, you know, bypass these challenges here. Uh, gonna activate this rune with RT. Another thing that Silver can do that you've seen me use is his Psychokinesis. We have the ability to hold RT on a stunned enemy or on other objects, pick them up, and if we press X while they're picked up, we're able to throw them at other enemies, which is pretty neat. Uh, moving on through here, we just hit right there, switch back to Sonic, and we will be seeing a lot more of Silver later. But uh, for right now, we're just going to grab this eagle and head into uh, Section 3. All right, moving on here into section three. Again, we got another overcast. I think there's, it's meant to be a bit more rainy here in section three, but unfortunately there aren't any rain particles or anything. Uh, section three is a much more linear segment, but uh, it's still very fun to run through. Kingdom Valley is a great stage. Uh, let's see. Moving on here, trying to do a little bit of a skip on the rail, but homing attacking rails in Retail 06, even in Legacy of Solaris, is a bit weird. As you can see, that spline there, I, like, teleported forward? I don't know. Pretty strange. Throwing enemies on enemies was already in Retail, though? Yes, it was. I didn't say it was exclusive to Legacy of Solaris. I'm just talking about it because we are playing Legacy of Solaris. Oh my gosh, can I please? <laughs> On these ropes here in Kingdom Valley, you can actually uh, jump on them again if you press nothing, and you get a higher bounce, up to three times is the max bounce. But here we go to one of the more iconic sections here of Sonic's Kingdom Valley as we uh, jump on this rope, and we are going to see this big automated section as Sonic runs on the castle here. Spin dash still useless, especially with the blue gem early. The spin dash is, yeah, not as great. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Uh, mods, if you could help me out for the people who were here at the beginning of the stream with uh, people coming in and asking questions and stuff, just kind of how this playthrough's formatted. Short story is, is that this is a YouTube video first and a stream second. Yes. 
All right, let's go here. Just running down and heading on the final wind rail here before we head into the mock speed section. Running on rails is kind of interesting in Retail 06. Uh, the acceleration mechanic, uh, there's actually a rhythm to it uh, in order to increase speed, and you can't spam it like you can in other games. Kind of interesting. Here we go, just doing some bounce attacks to defeat these multi-hit enemies. Some of the best ways to do it. And then we're heading on into the mock speed section. Our final mock speed section. Do, 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 do. Very good music as well. Do, do, do. All right, here we go. Some of the sound effects seem a little bit muted in this section. But as we can see in section four here, again, we have a original skybox up at top there. I believe there are a few more particle effects like this fog that you can see. Uh, I don't believe that's in retail 06. Muska and to others, this is a re just a short blurb and mods if you can help me out with this as well. This is a, a YouTube video first and a stream second. Though I don't like to do it with Legacy of Solaris, I am I am covering this game once. I'm not covering it multiple times. So a lot of people are coming in and asking the same questions, which on stream I don't usually mind answering. But for the sake of the commentary, since this is a YouTube video first, I don't want it to be me constantly answering repeat questions. So when people ask repeat questions, I, I'm just ignoring them for this playthrough specifically. Do uh, people appreciate the beauty of this section? It, it works pretty good. All right, there we go. Finishing up Kingdom Valley. That means we only got one more stage left here in Sonic Story. Let's see. As we just use our blue gem, we're going to go ahead while we're here in Castletown. Uh, in Castletown, I should say actually first is we don't quite have access to the ability to access other hub worlds yet. They kind of want you to finish up the story, which I guess is okay and sort of makes sense. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. But if we head on over to the shop, there is one new mission available to us, and it is mission 17, the 100 Forgotten Rings, uh, which is kind of a fun mission to do personally. Um, but the other optional town missions are still available to us in this hub world if you haven't done any in Castletown. Heading over to the shop, we finally have access to all of the gems, some of which have been reduced in price so that you can actually purchase them all in one playthrough. We have the sky gem, the yellow gem, and the purple gem. So we're going to go ahead and grab all these guys. And now we have every single upgrade that we, uh, we can purchase here in uh, Sonic Story. Um, so to kind of show off each of the three new gems we got, showing off the yellow gem first gives us access to the thunder shield, which uses a little bit of meter, but then we have this nice uh, shield that we can use. It can take one hit and draws in rings. That's all it does. But additionally, here in uh, Legacy of Solaris, and it's the same here in Retail 06, is that once you activate the shield, you can actually switch off of the yellow gem. So it's basically just an extra layer of protection that you have for it. Moving on next to the purple gem, what it does is it scales Sonic down to where he's really tiny. But while you're holding down RT, you have the ability to do infinite jumps, which is uh, kind of nice and goofy. Not as broken as it was in Retail 06, because in Retail, Sonic had infinite meter. Um, so in Legacy of Solaris, you can't, you know, moon jump to infinity, but you can still get quite a lot of distance. And there is a way to even extend the amount of jumps you can get, which I'll be showing off in Aquatic Base. Finally, we have the Sky Gem. So, uh, what I would say is my personal favorite gem and most people's personal favorite gem in Sonic 06. This thing is ridiculous. Old RT, Sonic charges the gem up, throw the gem, and it acts like a grappling hook, sending us wherever the, the gem lands, for better or for worse. The thing is, is the speed works quite differently. The farther Sonic is away from the gem, the faster he grapples to it. And because you keep the momentum of that, you can get some ridiculously bonkers height on uh, with the Sky Gem, which is crazy. You can also use it in the air, and you get a little jump boost, which is very nice. However, when you use the Sky Gem in the air, you can't do any other action beyond that. So be wary of that. 
Another thing is that if you look in the shop here, each gem actually has its own like name for the ability it has. So like the green gem grants tornado, red gem grants slow, blue gem grants mock speed and so on and so forth. I want to make special mention to the sky gem because it ability is called the gun drive, which makes no sense, but it's a super badass name. So I love mentioning it. All right, enough dilly dallying here. What we have to do, I believe, is we have to come over to this guy and uh, this guy being Lord Regis, who's the mayor of the town. Uh, maybe he's not actually over here. Oh, you don't have to talk to him. Okay, so we can just do this right away. All we have to do is we have to hit the three bells that are in Castletown. So that's the first one. Because of this new sky gem, let's go ahead and just take the thing and chuck it and uh, see where we land. Okay. Uh, let me aim it a little bit lower just to, you know, get some use out of it a little bit. Hey, there we go. All right. Go ahead and go to this clock tower. This clock tower is the location of our second bell. As we fly up here. Oh, didn't quite get enough height. That's fine. There are springs at the bottom of each one that you can just use to ride all the way up and get to the top. Boop. Very nice. And let's hold. And then our final bell is over there in that tower. So let's see if the sky gem can be uh, of use to us as we head over here. We don't throw me in the water. No, damn. <laughs> I believe now if we talk to one of the NPCs, they should say we've rung all the bells. This person has... That was something I did not know. She has full dialogue. That's cool. I did not know that that NPC had fully voice acted dialogue. That's cool. Instead of the standard, hey. The only voice acted NPC in the game. That's so cool. Okay, looks like we have to hit the three bells again, which is fine. What we're trying to do is hit those three bells. It opens that gate over to Aquatic Base. So let's just go ahead and hit him again. All right, that should be all three bells. I believe now if we talk to this guy, he'll tell us we hit all three bells. Okay, never mind. There's one NPC around here that tells you when you hit all three bells. Maybe it's the one in front of the aquatic base entrance. I don't quite remember. Holy crap, camera. And hey, silver medal. Nice. So uh, let's just move back over here, I guess. Do a water jump just for fun. Uh, you have a little bit of time when you land in water to do a jump out of it, which is kind of fun. And there we go. Aquatic base is open to us. So... All right, let's go ahead and finish off Sonic Story by jumping into Aquatic Base. This stage is a two-section stage, not too terribly long. Uh, we will be playing as uh, some amigos here, Tails and Knuckles, uh, to kind of cap off, have the ultimate stage. It's kind of weird because to me, Aquatic Base seems a lot more like a, a epilogue stage, even though it's like kind of going through it again it kind of seems out of place and more of just a justification for sonic to go through uh every single stage in the game because kingdom valley definitely has a larger sense of finality to it compared to aquatic base but aquatic base has some great music it's one of my personal favorite stages from 06 and uh yeah we're just gonna have some fun do do yo what's up volturius how you doing we are playing sonic 06 legacy of solaris Um. Okay, there's another enemy. I was like, where'd the last enemy go? Is that it? Oh, we got one more guy. <laughs> I'm so used to there being uh being a magnetic pole here. I kind of forgot where uh where the enemies were. Okay, please don't hurt me. Actually, using yellow gem will be useful here. Very nice. All right, what I'm going to show here. And uh, this part, I don't know why the yellow gem did that, but whatever. <laughs> um, we are going to, I'm going to show off the power of the purple gem here. So what you can do is that uh, even though your meter drains, as long as you're holding RT, Sonic can do a jump. So what I'm doing is that I'm really quickly pressing RT and then pressing A, and that lets Sonic do a jump just like this. So even though there is a limitation to how much of the... <laughs> what is going on with Sonic? Um, even though there is a limitation to how much of the gem you can use uh, now that the action gauge works properly, uh, you can still get some pretty insane distance. Like that. 
All right. Do, do. He still has the shield, sort of. <laughs> but here we go, playing more with Tails here. Uh, Tails, uh, which I'll talk more about in his solo story. But uh, he, in addition to the tail swipe, which I mentioned Wave Ocean, because it's actually the last time we saw the guy. Uh, in um, He has a tail swipe from PO6 that was added into Legacy of Solaris, which is very cool. Um, additionally, his flight is not tied to a meter. If you keep holding A, he will eventually tire out. But uh, his flight lasts so long in Retail 06, it's actually pretty hard to... Uh, it's actually pretty hard to run out of flight meter here. The thing is, though, is that Tails' flight is capped, which is kind of annoying. Um, but there is a patch that you can enable, and it works just fine with Legacy of Solaris, that uncaps Tails' flight, but his flight becomes extremely broken if you do that. Can I please hit that? Okay, so I hit that. And then as you're seeing me use here the dummy ring bombs, you just go into first person, you throw a dummy ring bomb, and it can defeat enemies, which is kind of nice. Moving on here, we see some alarms were re-added to Aquatic Base. Uh, which is kind of neat, adding to the ambiance of the stage. Pretty cool, makes sense considering that we're infiltrating the base. And here we go here, using the blue gem. Obviously, having all of the gems is the best course of action here, but we're mostly going to be using the blue gem, purple gem, and uh, yellow gem just to take some extra hits. What I'm going to do here, have some fun with the gun drive as we just fly over to section two. All right, moving on to section two here. We're just going to, well, hopefully go under these lasers. Didn't want to cooperate that time, unfortunately. One thing I want to show here, you can do with the sky gem. Uh, maybe you actually can't do it on this door. Now think about it. Oh, there we go. So uh, with the sky gem, the sky gem is the most game breaking thing in all of 06. Uh, as held together with duct tape as this game is, um, the the sky gem is just absurd with what it can do. What you saw me do right there is if you go to the corner of a door and throw the sky gem in the air, you can clip through it just like that. It's that easy. You can do that with most doors in the game and a lot of doors in aquatic base, which is pretty fun. Uh, if you like to try to go fast, but there's even crazier stuff you can do. I recommend watching a speed run of Sonic Aquatic Base from Retail 06 to kind of get what, what I mean. It's pretty ridiculous what you can do. All right, here we go. Moving on here, our final knuckles section where we just kind of glide to the end. Uh, I don't believe it's one of the patches, but I do believe that the glide descent was reduced a little bit uh, because one of the main complaints of Retail 06 is that Knuckles and Rouge descended too fast with their glide. I believe that it's lessened. It's not like Adventure 1 or Adventure 2 where you can just glide forever, but it's also not... Uh, how, how retail 06 is. All right. Moving on here. We'll use the green gem for these enemy encounters. Moving on here. Junk box. I showed that you could clip through like a minute ago. <laughs> Must have not been watching. <laughs> All right, here we go to the end of Aquatic Base here. Pretty simple stuff as we just head on over to the end. And there we go. The final major stage in Sonic, uh, Sonic Story and Legacy of Solaris, which is very cool. Just because we're at the end of this story doesn't mean we're at the end of the mod. There's so much stuff that we have to go through. But uh, it's nice to have one thing done. But we are not quite done yet. We do have one more boss fight to do which I think I'm going to do in a pretty fun way. All right, cleared the act mission. And got the S rank. We're going to do a little save here. And then... Da -da 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 we are fighting the Egg Wyvern. The Egg Wyvern is pretty interesting. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this boss fight. Normally, if you've played Sonic Adventure 1, it's the Egg Viper. It's just the Egg Viper with a different coat of paint. And even then, it's barely a different coat of paint because he's just as red as him. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have the Sky Gem out. And this is a little bit tricky to do, but hopefully we'll be able to get it. When the Egg Wyvern charges us, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to jump after he charges, throw the Sky Gem, and then grab his horn. 
because I did that, I threw the Sky Gem and Sonic grappled to it, even though I was attached to the horn. The camera's gonna look a bit wonky here, and the Egg Wyvern is just going to continue to fly forward. Now, a cool fail safe in Sonic 06, which is actually a, a pretty decent bit of programming, surprisingly, is that if a boss gets too far out of bounds of the arena, it, it just kills it immediately. So you can defeat the Egg Wyvern in like 20 to 30 seconds just by doing that trick. There is a faster way to do it, but that one is probably the easier of the two, uh, which is pretty cool. So, and there we go. That was Sonic's story. Getting makes stupidly hard to understand as a player. Yeah, <laughs> very true. But yeah, the normal way to fight that boss is very similar to the Egg Cerberus and Egg Viper. Um, so, uh, like the Egg Viper from SA1 and then the Egg Cerberus, which was the first boss fight in the story here. Um, but there we go. That is Sonic's story. There's not a whole lot I want to show off in terms of what happens when you complete it. But I will be uh, showing off just a couple of things here that happen if you go back into the episode once you 100% the story. So when you 100% the story in Legacy of Solaris, it's a bit similar to Retail 06, but this is way more of a post game than in Retail 06. Now, of course, if you did not have all of the upgrades, you are free to go to the shop and purchase them. Uh, you can access all of the action stages from the hub worlds and go to different hubs, which is very cool. Uh, additionally, if you did not complete any town missions, this is where you would have the ability to complete any of the town missions you missed. So if you want to check out some of the optional stuff that I did not cover here in this playthrough, you can check that out. But uh, a unique thing here in New City, these mirrors are actually from a beta build uh, because obviously you're thrown into the future. So there are no mirrors to actually enter Crisis City and Flame Core. So these are actually unique, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, you don't see these anywhere in the normal game, which is kind of fun. But an interesting thing is if, if you hop into one of these mirrors that are in the post-game hub world, you don't load the regular action stage. You actually load the hard mode of the stage. Now, hard mode, the hard mode version of the stages in Retail Sonic 06 is something that a lot of people may confuse with the very hard DLC, which vastly change how the stages operate and stuff. The hard mode, as you can see as I'm playing through Flame Core here, does not change much. We literally have a few extra enemy formations and some spike balls thrown, and that's pretty much it. While it is a cool thing, I personally don't recommend playing through the hard versions of these stages, and thusly will not be playing through the hard versions of these stages for this playthrough, because they're just not worth playing through, in all honesty. You'd better, better spend your time playing the very hard stages or the new extra acts that are in Legacy of Solaris. But uh, yeah, that was Sonic's story. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. And I will see you next time in Legacy of Solaris with Tails' story. Very cool. See you then.